final quarter of the preliminary final. Geelong monster leaders. Madden wins it yet again. But can they get it out of the centre? It would appear once more, no. To centre wing, Flanagan. Receiving from Cameron. Goes down towards half forward. Stoneham and Hamilton. Stoneham does well. Flanagan pats it on to Couch. From 50 metres, he sets sail for home. A good-looking kick in towards the square, and O'Donnell hammers it over for one behind. And Sandy, a new opponent now for Gary Ablett, Dean Wallace. Big task for the youngster. A little bit like being asked to go on to death row, wouldn't it? <laughs> Anthony Danaher. He'd be wrapped in the coach for making that decision. Learning curve, I think they call it. <laughs> Malakellis to Hocking. Oh. Malakellis again. Now Hocking again. Well, he's still persisting. Couch. When we get onto that left foot, he runs into a heap of trouble in the form of Manning. And again, Malcolm Blight, as I mentioned before, be hoping that the Geelong players don't start flirting their form. Hocking there, just a little casual. Down to her up the ground. Out wide, Walsh on the forward line, camped over the ball, slaps it out. Anthony Danaher wobbles one down towards the 50 metre line and spins out of bounds. 45 to 130. Geelong, massive leaders, and already looking past the remainder of this game, I'm sure. Views, brilliantly taken. Widner comes away. Marvellous skills, back towards centre wing and Brownless. A certain arrogance in their play now. He goes towards half forward, storming up the ground is Ablett. Too far out, you think? No, not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big breach from there, I think. He's elected the short pass, though, and finds Scott. That Scott will kick from about 50 metres out. Nobody back in the square. So he'll wait. Robert Scott, not a long kick. Comes in quickly again. They'll contest in the goal square. Stoneham, far too easy. Too strong, too committed. Shane Hamilton is giving away a bit of height and his competitors can't be queried here, but it's just too skillful, Barry Stoneham, and too, too tall and strong. Even the little fellow Buick from behind should have committed there and came over the top or tried to. So Stoneham, point blank range, post the 20th goal. And that's his third goal. Kicked one on the first, one on the third, and then one in his final quarter. And I think he's been a fine player today. I really do admire Barry Stoneham, particularly over these last few weeks where he's a little down on form. He's come back very, very well, starting with last week. As you see on the replay here, good use of the body, strong hands, and a good finish. And he really has given them someone to kick to at centre-half forward and allowed Ablett Scott to run freely. Well, Geelong fans still aren't content. The chant is up again. Flanagan is preparing to do the ruck work in the middle. Beats Simon Madden on that occasion, but Ezard puts boot the ball, goes down towards Long. He couldn't take it cleanly, however. And the Geelong springboard of attack almost starting on that half-back line as Couch goes long and direct towards Abler. Couldn't take it. Wallace from behind. Trying to storm out was Danaher. Comes free to Bairstow, but he's claimed. So too Hocking. Now Brownless under pressure. And eventually, after trying to get through about five of them, loses it. Dean Bailey from half back. In towards the centre. Or oh, Danaher. Well, despite the ageing legs, he's still trying his heart out. Thought I noticed Lidner flying through the air there for a moment. Propelled he was. <laughs> <laughs> he 
Nice free kick from half back. Stabs it in towards centre wing. And Simon Madden says, here we go. Couple of bounces around the boundary line towards Thompson. And out of bounds on the four. Well, it must have been touch and go, but that epitomises Essendon for the day. Bitter disappointment at Bomberland. So, we'll have another go. Certainly tried hard enough. Walsh at half forward. He's got nothing. Anderson drops back in the square. He'll to go short. Watson gets a bad bounce initially, uh, but recovers well. Now loses it. They cramp him. Couch gets it out to Hocking. He'll go wider to the running Bruns. Gets away from Long. Gets his kick in towards the centre. Stoneham late on the scene, but comes in from the side to affect the spoil. Oh, Hamilton could have made a dreadful mistake. Spawn comes in to lend assistance. Scott is paddling it along, and he gets in front. Played well at Scott. Shoots in towards full forward. Wallace and Ablett. And it will be Wallace who brings it away for the Bombers. Has a look towards that half-back line. Not a lot there. The bounce is a shocker for Walsh. But uh, luck's a fortune on that occasion. It finishes with Bailey. Dean Bailey just forward of centre. Going towards the half-forward line and Thompson. In trouble. Running out of room. Wanted to pop it over for Watson. Has him now. And Watson sees Bailey who drifted down into that forward pocket region on a better angle. So Dean Bailey with only his sixth kick for the day. Will go short as well. And find Buick. A crowd of 67,892. Here at the park for this game. Buick. For the Bombers' seventh. And he gets it. And that's his second goal. He's had a fairly quiet day. 11th kick. Two handballs and a couple of marks. He's found the going a little difficult today, Darren Buick. I just feel that perhaps injury he copped a couple of weeks ago, the foot injury, along with Tim Watson, has just been difficult to overcome. It's just taken away a bit of their zip. They're not taking anything away from Geelong at all. They've been fine performers this afternoon. Twenty sixteen to seven nine Essendon getting their first goal of the second half eight minutes into the final term. This is Couch got it from Stoneham swings it out wide. Ablett and Wallace Ablett the better recovery confronted by Danaher off the ground by Wallace around the boundary line it goes Couch keeps it in play brilliantly done he was held without it. And the ball will come back. Paul Couch eventually this afternoon has shrugged the shackles no doubting that one looking for Flanagan and finding him Flanagan only about 25 meters out from goal on what is an acute angle the tactic today Dennis of Malcolm Blight using Burke and Flanagan in a half going quarter by quarter has actually nullified Simon Madden whilst not being great contributors. They've bustled and worked pretty hard. Aaron Flanagan misses to the near side, but increases the lead. 137 to 51. Anthony Danaher to bring it back. Hopefully the weather will hold. It'll be like this next Saturday. A great game. Runs hard against the boundary line. Pulls it back towards the pocket. Over the top. Guess who? <laughs> Gary Ablett. And I think even the Essendon supporters are giving begrudging applause now. What an exhibition. Five goals this afternoon. 399 career goals, 25 possessions for a personal milestone. 
It's home. 400 career goals, Gary Ablett. As I mentioned earlier, Dennis, it's, it's you describe Gary Ablett with any superlative if you like, but his talents really have been on display today. And the jump as he did then at this stage of the game, not getting a ride on anyone, taking that mark on his chest and finishing off with a good goal from there. I'd take him to Barcelona. <laughs> Planning it again, back in the centre with Madden. We're nearing a 100-point margin. Terry Danner, with just over 16 minutes remaining, Lindner marks at halfback. Plays quickly onto Schulz, then goes back again. So Lindner, from just on the defensive side of centre wing, goes down towards hockey. He's grown in confidence. He thought about Stoneham. Goes short into the pocket, and Brownless marks inside 50. Well, it has at times become somewhat repetitious, hasn't it, Ross? Yeah, it's just a matter of how fast and you're losing it, which is a shame. So from 50 metres, he's pulled that badly to the left. Might have just snuck it in. I suppose it wouldn't be such a shame if you were a Geelong supporter, but for the spectacle, it has been a little disappointing. O'Donnell now. Going to the outer side, the target being Madden. Flanagan was in front of him. Hawking at the bottom. Goes back to his Ruckman, who shovels it forward well for Stoneham. Look at this athlete. Pulls it back in towards full forward. Hamilton and Ablett collide. And it will be Hamilton who will take the free kick. Paul Hamilton in the back pocket. Going short. And finding Spawn. From the defensive 50 metre line, he goes towards centre wing. Madden up with the one hand. Couldn't take it. Bruns over the top with some solid work. Eventually pushed wide towards the boundary line and in fact over Cameron a little late on the scene as Essendon supporters start leaving the ground. They realise the season for their team has come to an end. From another side, nicely down by Flanagan to Hamilton, the high kick, hugs the boundary line and proceeds to bounce out of bounds. Hawking coming across on Spawn. They really do have an appetite for it this afternoon. It's a long, look at that score line. Remarkable. Flanagan to Werner. There's the time remaining. Kick around the outer side. Terry Danaher missed it. Chases hard. Linda was legged by Danaher in desperation. And Linda will take the free. Up towards centre wing. The defender this afternoon. It's across the ground. Well, you doubt the wisdom of that. Darcy coming up from fullback misses it. Now they're exposed. Off the ground by Hamilton. This is Boss. Gets the hand pass away to Darcy. They recover well enough to Cameron. Back to Darcy. Darcy towards centre half forward. The leading Brownless hangs onto it. Three juggles. Brownless, who can kick it a long way. Ablett's down in the square. It slides off the side of the boot. The crowd feel they were robbed. Madden takes a great mark. In the back pocket. Dean Bailey off the ground. Enter us back on again. Wallace has got it. Around the outer side. Danaher, defiant till the last. Couldn't hang on. This is Anthony Danaher. After Terry contested the mark and once more, the ball close to the boundary line out that side. So in prospect, Hawthorne and Geelong in the grand final. If you go back to round six, Hawthorne won that game by eight points after Geelong led by 49 points at half time. The chant as the wave goes up here at VFL Park. Danaher marks on centre wing. Cameron fists delightfully. Away goes Bairstow. Short. The pass is good. And the mark is taken by Abbott. Oh. Short again. They've got loose players everywhere. Bairstow just drifted down. 
Malcolm Blight would be delighted with their running today. He mentioned that at quarter time and three quarter time in the huddle. Their persistence has been magnificent. Their ability to run and their desire to run has been terrific. It's a good way. It's a great way. And Bearstar heads towards goal. Has he brought it back enough? Not enough. So one kick, one straight kick to make the margin 100 points. Almost 70,000 fans involved in the wave. Danaher again, that's a great kick back into play. Long couldn't quite complete the mark. Oh. Ablett brilliantly out to Flanagan. Short passes. This is champagne football. Brown was his kick three. Yes, I'm sure the Hawthorne players in the stand will be watching this very closely. He has now picked four. And I'm sure while they're watching, they'll be surprised that Essendon capitulated as much as they have. As I mentioned earlier, Alan Jean suggested that Essendon was a team they'd have to beat. That's certainly not the case. Geelong just surging forward. And there's not really any move that Kevin Sheedy can make at this stage, as it has been throughout the most of the day, that could change the style of this game. Well, last year, Malcolm Blight was at the MCG for the Australian Television Network. Next week, he'll be there as coach of Geelong. They've come from outside the five. I think from memory, they finished ninth last season. And here they are to go into the grand final. And make no mistake, they're a big chance. This is Couch, claimed by Long. We've got a whistle. Earlier free kick, it'll be taken by Manning. Alongside the centre circle in Manning. High kick towards half forward. Lidner will come from behind, fisting away. Brilliantly done, Anderson. Anderson towards full forward, and the favourite for the Brownlow takes the mark and trots in to kick a goal, Tim Watson. Yes, and the crowd fairly thickly reacting with a boo for that passage of play by Essendon, which is not really deserved. The players certainly have been trying. They've just been totally outclassed by a very, very good team today. Each player for Geelong has really contributed in some form or another, not necessarily statistically or on the scoreboard with goals themselves, but they really have worked and teamed very, very well together. A little over 10 minutes remaining. Back to a 94-point margin. Pass Bairstow, back to Bairstow from Hamilton. A short kick will be taken by Plain, who's been on and off the bench, to Buick, and then back again. Almost down to half forward. Lidner! Couldn't take it. Cameron has his handball partly smothered. Antrobus needs someone going past. Finds Madden, on to Thompson. The hurried left foot kick goes down towards centre half forward again. Long over his head was good play. Bruns right at the back, however. Brings it away. Danaher oh, takes a strong mark just outside 50. Tried his heart out, Terry Danaher. Always does. And 18 kicks and eight marks tell the story. Short, just inside 50, Alan Izzard, who, on the other hand, has had a disappointing day. Six kicks, three marks, short to play. Bradley Plain with only his fifth kick for the day. Kicking from just inside 50 and going for distance off the side of the boot. Couch showed courage. Still uh, plenty of heavy work going on. Bustled out his Walsh with the football. Andrew Manning at the bottom. And a dejected Dean Bailey on the bench. Dejected for that reason. Malakellis. Can't throw it out. Socket to Watson. Will this be another one? No, stolen by Hocking. Well done. Pushes wide towards Hamilton, who marks on half-back. 
Drifts it into the centre. Couch has got a panic. An absolute panic. Spawn chasing now, but he's had three bounces from 60 metres. Kicks in towards full forward. Scott sees it over the line. Well, good to see Kieran Spawn chasing in the fashion that he did there. With the game well and truly lost at this stage in the last quarter late, he must be tired, but he chased very well then. Good diligent effort. What would Kevin Shetty be saying on the phone with seven minutes to go? Stoneham behind the back. Ablett in the pocket. Don't tell me. I don't believe it. <laughs> seven goals, four. Fine effort from Gary Ablett. And really has complimented the hard work of his teammates up the field, giving them someone to kick to. See this here, the tap coming out from Stoneham Ablett. Miraculously, from the pocket, number seven. Gary Ablett. Ablett, seven goals, the most by a Geelong player against Essendon in a final round match. He did that some time ago when he kicked his fifth. Once more, Couch pumps it into the forward line. Here's Scott, about 20 metres out from goal. That's ambitious. That's almost out of bounds on the full. And or a mark. What's the decision? It's a mark. And O'Donnell has this ball in the back pocket. Andrew Manning off the ground. Dean Bailey back again. O'Donnell towards centre half back. They all look around except Bruns, who ran hard at the ball. Took the mark, goes in short. Any one of a number. Darcy up the ground. Darcy at centre half forward. Bearstow chips him. That pass is actually meant for uh, Mark Bearstow. <laughs> but I don't think he's too unhappy to see it go to his teammate. So Darcy, the full back. A chance to share in the spoils this afternoon. Good looking kick. Has it got the carry? Brownless comes over the top. Anthony Danaher gets his hands on it and through it goes for a minor score. Malcolm Blight. He'd be feeling very content at the moment. The challenge, of course, lies ahead. He knows that, but not bad odds. 50 50. Danaher down the middle. Not a particularly good kick. Ezard fisting on. Anderson. Chip pass out wide. Danaher. To Long, who's been disappointing this afternoon. Long is second bounce. The youngest man on the ground, though. Some consolation. Goes to the pocket. Watson again. Takes the mark. Getting free down there. He polled 11 votes in the Brownlow last season. He's the favourite this season. Today, by his lofty standards, not a great afternoon's work. 13 kicks, 5 hand passes. Chance at his second goal of the quarter. It's close. It's a goal. Well, Tim Watson really has a penchant for hard work, and he's really worn himself out this afternoon. But the game last week, I really do believe, wore him right down. And whilst he's been an inspiration today, that's just been slightly off. Not through a try, of course. However, he just found that zip and that pace gone in those tired legs. Back in the middle once again with just under five and a half minutes remaining. A well padded Flanagan up against Simon Madden. Flanagan down to Hocking. Ezard rides him into the ground and Andrew just makes sure he stays there. Thompson to the half forward line. Terry Danaher wants someone going past. Look at the quick thinking of Long onto Walsh, but he was claimed and Boss brings it away. Across to Darcy. Gets his kick just in time. There's no one at home on this occasion. And Werner takes the mark at half back. Eventually accelerates away with a hand pass to Wallace. He kicks long up towards Madden at half forward. It spills free. Thompson under great pressure. So too is Ezard. In fact, he was bumped out of it. Malakellis away. A high kick in towards the centre. Ablett sandwich. Stoneham was going one way, then the other. Out in front of Hamilton and Brownless. He lopes around Bill Brownless. Kicks in towards half forward. Ablett. A 
And so the one-man show in the Geelong forward line continues. Again, just Wallace taking his eyes at the ball there, watching Ablett rather than the ball. That might have no been chance Brown. to spoil that, but a good, good pass coming from Brownless with the play coming out of the centre with a good lead up by Stoneham. And there, fine statistics for Gary Ablett. Directly in front, kicking from just inside 40 metres. And long live the king. Great goals for in this standard of football is a remarkable effort and he's really proved a great spectacle for the crowd today in a game that really has pitted out as a, a real competitive match. And again, I will compliment Essen, they have kept trying, they just lack the players with the form and ability. Twenty-four twenty to nine nine. Here's Couch. Ablett eight goals. This is Hawking coming the way. Out wide. Hamilton takes the mark. Shane Hamilton of Geelong then. Forward of centre wing. Intended for Brownless. Anthony Danaher over the top. Nicely done. Recovers well. Disappointing end for what's been a fine season for the Bombers. Walsh, centre wing. Towards half forward, Anderson up in front, across the boundary line it goes. Well, clear the table, a feast of football lies ahead next Saturday when you think about the players that are going to be on that ground. It's mind-boggling. Dunstall, Brereton, Ablett, Couch, Bearstow, Platten. Remarkable. This is Stoner, but the ball will come back. Kick to be taken by Hamilton. Hamilton towards half forward, not a good kick. Madden's in the row. Claimed by Ablett. Well, one football genius has been able to harness another. Malcolm Blight has got the utmost out of Ablett, no question about that. Malakellis has played well in defence. To Couch is running up the numbers now. Brownless knocking away. Hawking pushed off it well by Hamilton. Paul Hamilton breaks away from the 50 metre line, confronted by Couch. That could be holding the ball, holding the man, says the umpire. Well, I didn't see him punch it if he did. Well, the ball came back to him as he bounced it, Dennis. As he went to take it again, it touched his hands, then fell away. So, in fact, knocked it out again, and he was tackled without the ball. Couch, 24 possessions. Walsh, defensive side of centre. We've got a minute and a half remaining. Towards Dana. And he marks in the middle. Plays on quickly. Onto the left boot. His brother has a chance to give it to Michael Long. He bounces his way inside 50. Steady with the left foot. In towards Spawn, who will just leave it and let it roll over the line for a goal. Well, it's good play by Long initially to knock the ball out of a contest into Andy, or towards Anthony Danaher, then received the ball again. He was going to square the ball to give his teammates a chance at the top of the square, realising he had an option to go long. He did that, and a good finish off here. As he received the ball back from Danaher, the bounce, looked to centre, decided to go long, and it paid off. First goal to Michael Long. Flanagan wins it. Bairstow takes it out of the middle. Up towards the half forward line. Scott and Ablett. But on this occasion, beaten. And kick back to Antrobus. Who goes wide. Very wide. But finds Hamilton. Over the top to Thompson. Probably been the Bombers' best in this final series. Short to Bailey. Who heads for home with a long kick at the back, Anderson. That off target and one behind. Greg Anderson has certainly tried hard. 18 kicks, three hand passes. Darcy again. 
Short, straight down the middle to Lidner. Bruce Lidner from half back. Flat looking punt kick in towards the centre. Past Hamilton it goes. Ezard will have a chance. Chasing his hocking. Ezard on the outer wing. Gets away, but it doesn't matter. There it is. The Cats are in the grand final for 89. An enormous victory for Geelong. The smiling captain leaves the bench. Stoneham Ablett. Natural jubilation because Geelong have under Malcolm Blight stormed back into the finals.